Hi everyone. In my previous video, I talked about business research and this time I am going to discuss about the types of business research. So we actually have two types. We have the applied research and the basic or fundamental research. So let's have um, applied research first. This is a research done with the intention of applying the results of the findings to solve specific problems currently being experienced in an organization. So let us always remember that when we say applied research, the problem here is already existing or currently happening and needs uh, an immediate response or solution before the certain problem gets out of hand. So we have here an example. Globally, coal is account for more than 50% of all soda sold. The challenge for the $187 billion soft drink industry is giving consumers its developed markets the sugary taste they want without giving them the mouthful of calories they don't. Concerns about obesity and health have led to nine years of falling U.S. soda consumption. The soda giants can't rely on existing diet versions of their namesake colas as consumers are shying away from the artificial sweeteners they contain. Critics have blamed the ingredients, highly or not, for everything from weight gain to cancer. Diet Coke is losing U.S. sales at 7% a year, almost double the rate of decline of American cola sales overall. So Coke and Pepsi are turning to research to save their cola businesses, which take in about two-thirds of the industry's U.S. sales. If you can crack the perfect sweetener, that would be huge, says Howard Telford, an analyst at researcher Euromonitor International. So in the given example, we can clearly see that the problem is the decline of American soda sales. This is due to the concerns of the consumers about this artificial sweetener that can cause um, obesity and health problems like cancer so this is a so societal level of problem already that needs to be addressed or needs a solution right away so in the example it is said that coke and pepsi are already turning to research to save their coca cola business so they have to uh, research to have that immediate solution to their problem so that they can maintain or even increase their sales in the market again and at the same time of course increasing the sales and uh, serving healthier sodas for the consumers so that is an example of applied research and we have another example here in the classical mythology Aquila is the eagle carrying Jupiter's thunderbolts skyward Facebook, it is the code name for a high flying drone and decorative of the social networking company's lofty ambitions. The V shaped and manned vehicle, which has about the wingspan of a Boeing 767 but weighs less than a small car, is the centerpiece of Facebook's plan to connect with the 5 billion or so people it has yet to reach. Taking to the skies to beam internet access down from solar power drones may seem like a stretch for a tech company that sells ads to make money. So as you can see in the image here, this is the Facebook's Aquila. It is a V-shaped and manned vehicle. So this is a flying drone. So the business model at Facebook, which has 1.4 billion users, has more in common with NBC than Boeing. But in a high-stakes competition for domination of the internet, in which Google builds high altitudes balloons and high-speed fiber networks, and Amazon has experimental delivery drones and colossal data centers, Facebook is under pressure to show that it too can pursue projects that are more speculative and than products. One of those offbeat ideas or so the thinking goes could turn out to be a winner. The Amazons, Googles, and Facebooks are exploring completely new things that will change the way we live, said Ed Lozowska, who holds the Bill and Melinda Gates Chair in Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. So in this example, 
The existing problem here is the increasing competition of these networking sites uh, uh, in the market. So Facebook uh, as one of the largest networking sites, so they don't want to be fall behind. So they are already uh, searching uh, and exploring completely new things to become more innovative. And so they can offer a lot of uh, change in the way people live and and more about how people can easily connect. So they have to do research to have that uh, immediate uh, response or immediate solution to this problem so that they can remain uh, competitive in their uh, market. So those two examples are like an example of uh, an applied research. So next, let's have uh, the basic or the fundamental research. This is a research done shiftly to make a contribution to existing knowledge. So basic research uh, helps build theories based from research results. And these theories are later then used as a foundation for further studies of many aspects of uh, the phenomenon. So a phenomenon is actually, it is a situation that is being observed and is uh, being uh, is happening. So for example, of a phenomenon, like for example, we have a stress. We know stress is already existing and being observed by a lot of uh, doctors or scientists maybe. And um, for example, a doctor is like searching if this uh, certain level of stress can make a person more aggressive. So the research aims uh, more, uh, the research aims uh, to expand the doctor's knowledge about the possible uh, effects of stress to human beings. So they are trying to Im improve scientific theories and they are expect, uh, uh, they are expanding their base knowledge. So that is basic knowledge. So basic knowledge is important because it generates more knowledge and understanding of the phenomenon's interest and uh, this build theories based on research results. Uh, that's why I said earlier that it is used as a foundation to further research in the future. So we have here an example. Right from her days as a clerical employee in a bank, Sarah had observed that her colleagues, though extremely knowledgeable about the nuances and intricacies of banking, were expending very, very little effort to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the bank in the area of customer relations and service. They took on the minimum amount of work, availed themselves of long tea and lunch breaks, and seemed unmotivated in dealings with the customers and the management. That they were highly knowledgeable about banking policies and practices was clearly evident from their discussions as they possess applications from customers. Sarah herself was very hardworking and enjoyed her work with the customers. She always used to think that a huge waste it was for talented employees to goof off rather than to work hard and enjoy their work. When she left the bank and de did the dissertation for her PhD, her topic of investigation was job involvement or the ego investment of people in their jobs. The conclusion of her investigation was that the single most important contributor contributory factor to job involvement is the fit to match between the nature of the job and the personality predisposition of the people engaged in performing it. For example, challenging jobs allow deep employees with high capabilities to get job involved and people-oriented employees got job involved with service activities. So Sarah then understood why the highly intelligent bank employees could not get job involved or find job satisfaction in the routine jobs that rarely called for the use of their abilities. Subsequently, when Sarah joined the international research team of a, future, of a Fortune 500 company, she applied this knowledge to solve problems of motivation, job satisfaction, job involvement, 
and like in the organization. So employees cannot improve their effectiveness and efficiency efficiency at work if they are unmotivated. So that is an example of a disturbing phenomena because it can happen to every organization. So given the example, uh, uh, when Sarah left the bank, he did uh, an investigation about job involvement and ego investment of people in their jobs. So Sarah based her research from, or he got the uh, idea from her observation from her previous job. So this research uh, can help Sarah to uh, have, uh, the result can be used as a basis to prepare for the future and prevent possible issues that may arise in the future. So this is going to be very useful. So it adds or improves Sarah's uh, knowledge about uh, how to manage people in a certain organization. So this is an example of basic research. The knowledge uh, generated from basic research can uh, generate more knowledge and understanding of a certain phenomenon. And of course, it helps to build theories that are based from research results. And then later, these theories also are used to uh, uh, use as a foundation for further studies. And this, the result of this basic research also can be used as, uh, uh, as a basis for the research for solving problems also in the future. So which do you think is a more important uh, the basic research or the applied research? Well, actually, both of these research are important as, as applied research is uh, a research that is finding out solutions to problem at hand. And basic research, it can add knowledge to existing so existing one that is can be used also for future uh, for the future to, so that you can also solve problems in the future. So both uh, re type of research is very important.